What are the steps to an induction of labor? What should you expect throughout the process? Here's a summary of the methods used during an induction and how each will help you go into labor. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Graham Darzna. As we learned in the previous video, an induction of labor is the process to get your body into labor through medication and other means. In this video, we'll learn what you can expect from the moment you walk into the hospital to the moment your baby's born. We'll also learn about the various methods used to perform an induction. While you're watching, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Once you arrive at the hospital, a nurse will get you settled into your room, verify your medical chart information, and place an IV to get some blood tests. The resident or attending doctor will come in and check you in. We'll do an ultrasound to confirm the baby's head is facing down, and we'll check your cervix to determine how to start the induction. For people who have had vaginal deliveries before, the cervix may already be soft, thin, or dilated. In that case, you can skip a couple steps. Your contractions and the baby's heart rate will likely be monitored continuously, and the nurse or doctor will check your cervix periodically, based on the method being used. If you feel a huge increase in rectal or vaginal pressure, or your water breaks, you can be checked earlier. Otherwise, we try not to disturb you. Throughout the process, you can usually walk around in your room or the hallway and sit on a birthing ball. If you have pain at any point, there are several options, including an epidural. You can discuss pain management options with your nurse, OB provider, and the anesthesiologist. Once your cervix is fully dilated, you can begin pushing. Unlike in TV and movies, pushing can take several hours. Your nurse or midwife will always be with you while pushing, and once you're very close to delivery, the resident or attending doctor will come to the room. A second nurse will also come and take care of the baby if there are any concerns. There are six common methods used for induction of labor. The first is called membrane stripping or sweeping, and it's often used to help people go into spontaneous labor so that they won't need an induction. Your OB provider will do a cervical exam in the office and sweep their fingers in a circle between the cervix and the baby's head, separating the amniotic sac that the baby is in from the cervix. Think of the sac as sticking to the cervix and helping it stay closed. Sweeping away the membrane can help release and dilate the cervix, and this can trigger spontaneous labor. The next two options are named mesoprostol and dinoprostone. They are medications from the same family of compounds called prostaglandins, and using one of them is the usual first step for induction when you get to the hospital and your cervix is closed and firm. This is because they soften the cervix, and when the cervix is softer, it can become thinner and dilate better. Since their job is just to soften, do not expect your cervix to be much more dilated than one to two centimeters. It may only change from closed to fingertip, which is like half a centimeter. Mesoprostol comes in a pill that you can either swallow, put under your tongue, or insert vaginally. You will typically receive a dose every couple of hours for 24 hours. Dinoprostone comes as a gel that can be applied vaginally or a vaginal insert that looks like a shoelace. That shoelace version will remain in the vagina at the cervix for 12 hours. Once your cervix is softer, a balloon can be inserted. A balloon is a small thin tube that is inserted through the cervix and inflated at the end. So it is above the cervix inside the uterus and applies constant pressure. This will help soften the cervix and dilate it. Typically patients are three to five centimeters after a balloon. At the same time as a balloon or afterwards, the medication called Pitocin will be used. This is a medication that is the same as the hormone your brain is making called oxytocin, which causes contractions. Unless your body is already contracting well, you'll be given the Pitocin so your contractions can be adjusted to the optimal rate. Finally, if needed, an amniotomy can be performed. The sac that the baby develops in throughout pregnancy will sometimes break on its own and you'll see and feel a large gush of fluid, which we call breaking your water. But sometimes this doesn't happen before or during labor, so your provider can artificially break your water. This will cause the baby's head to come down and push harder on the cervix to help it dilate. It doesn't hurt you or the baby, and it can help labor progress. There is one main risk, however, which is that while the fluid is rushing out, the umbilical cord may also slip out. This is called a cord prolapse, which is an emergency. The cord cannot be pushed back in, so it requires an emergency C-section. Although this makes an amniotomy sound like a scary option, your provider will only do it if they feel it's a safe option at the time and that it's required to continue moving towards achieving the desired vaginal delivery. In the next video, we'll talk about what happens if the induction of labor does not work. 
Thanks for watching. Now hit that subscribe button and like the video. Then check out this other video to keep learning.